All right, we are live. Thanks for joining for our new live Bible study uh, with uh, Lyft Community Church. And I apologize for how yellow I look. I don't know. You know, I've been having a lot of problems with Facebook Live. I can't use it on my laptop anymore. For some reason, it doesn't work with Chrome. Um, so I'm using my phone. But um, anyway, I kind of look like a Oompa Loompa. <laughs> All right. Well, we, let's get started. Um, so we are continuing our series uh, from the book Whisper, How to Hear the Voice of God by Mark Batterson. And uh, this is... Um, what we're, we're on part five. We've been talking about the ways that God speaks to us. And uh, the first one we did was a scripture. God speaks to us through scripture. You know, like if you're reading a scripture and something kind of jumps out at you, um, that, that the Holy Spirit's saying, pay attention to this. It's God speaking to you. The second one was desire, that God gives us our desires and God speaks to us through our desires. Um the third one was doors. God opens and closes doors, and that's one way that God speaks to us. Uh, last week, we talked about dreams, and they're not just like hopes for your future kind of dreams, but actual dreams and visions that that uh, that you can have, um, and that God speaks to us through that. Um, Joseph is, of course, uh, we just finished the holidays, but it's a great, is a great example. You know, he made his decision about what he was going to do in terms of his relationship with Mary. And then, um, you know, he had a dream and an angel appeared to him in a dream and said, you know, Mary's telling you the truth, take her as your wife. So, uh, that's the kind of dreams that we talked about last week that God gives us dreams. And, uh, so today, part, uh, part five, and then there's only seven. So we have two more after this is uh, people, that God speaks to us through people. And I think that's probably a pretty common way that most of us experience God speaking to us. Um, you know, we'll, someone will say something and it'll really stick with us and we'll know that it's, it's something from God that we need to hear. So let's pray and then we're going to jump in and uh, talk about how God speaks to us through people. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you so much for your goodness, your mercy, and your love how you speak to us, you desire to speak to us through these many different ways. Um, as we talk about how you use others to speak to, to us and how you use us to speak to other people, um, Lord, guide us by your Spirit and uh, enliven us by your Spirit, move in our hearts, and may each one of us, each person that hears these words, uh, walk away with something from you that will draw them near to you and to each other, and us to each other. We thank you in Christ's name. Amen. All right, so um, let's jump in here. And the first scripture I want us to look at is um, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Uh, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings, to, uh, sin clings so closely and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. So we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Um, we stand on the shoulders of those who have gone before us in the faith, and um, people that come after us will also stand on our shoulders. Um, so um, what we say and how what we speak into people's lives um, carries the faith on, and what people have spoken into our lives carries on the faith. So we want to pay attention to... Um, the words of the great crowd of cloud of witnesses of those who've gone before us and those who um, that we are also a part of the great cloud of witnesses too. We are witness uh, to God to other people. Um, so uh, one of the things that the first thing and I've got uh, six different things here that I was going to touch on and how God speaks to us through people. Um, and the first one is hum humility. Be humble. Be humble. We need to be humble. We have to, uh, and in order to be humble, we, we need to be humble in order to listen to what other people are saying, um, speaking into our lives, um, and to receive what, what we're hearing. Um, and um, we also need to be humble in order to hear what God is saying to us. Um, and if we're going to, if God's going to speak something through us to someone else, we need to, we had, we need to have humility. Um, and the scripture I want to look at for that is Proverbs 3.34. 
uh, I pro I'm not going to look it up. I'm just going to read it here. I wrote it down, but um, it's God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. And um, this is a really important proverb. It's actually repeated by James in the book of James, James chapter four, verse six. It's also repeated by the author of First Peter in First Peter five five. Um, they they all quote this proverb: God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Humility is um, a uh, something that's very valued by God. Um, it's also in the um, Christ hymn in Philippians. Uh, Paul uh, includes in the book of, uh, in his letter to the Philippian church, uh, a hymn called the Christ hymn. It's about Jesus. It would have, it's believed it was a hymn that would have been sung in the first century church that people, that the, the Philippian church would have known. And he, he quotes um, the words to that. And the words are um, that um, Jesus came uh, in, in great humility um, not considering the fact that he was the son of God um, as something to be lauded or lifted up, but he came as a servant with humility. So um, humility is extremely important if we want to be able to um, listen to others and actively and actively listen. And that's really important too. Um, you know, we have, a lot of us have the, the habit um, of when people speak, uh, we're already thinking about what we're going to say instead of really listening to what they're saying. Um, you know, a, a, a good habit is to repeat what people are saying. So if someone's speaking to you is to reiterate what they're saying, you know, well, what I heard you say is, and that way they know that you really were listening to them. But also if, if you are listening in such a way so that you can repeat what they're saying to you, then you're actively listening. Um, and that's important because you can't receive a word from God from someone else if you're not paying attention to what they're saying, right? And so that, that takes humility. There's, there's um, um, some humility involved there. The other way that God speaks to us um, is uh, and through others and why it's important is because we all have different gifts. We all have different ideas, different personalities. And um, um, those things can bless us. Um, where we're weak, uh, someone else might be strong. Um, and so God speaks to us through the different gifts of, the, of others, the different ideas of others. Um, you know, we're, we're, we don't live in a vacuum. Um, we need each other. And God created us to be in community with one another, to be in relationship with one another, not only with God, but with each other. So um, we have to listen to each other. And it's, a, it's vital that we be humble in order to do that and to receive the, the gifts that God has given others into our lives. Um, number two is be an encourager. So number one is be humble. Number two is be an encourager. Um, and the scripture I want us to look at for that is 1 Corinthians 16 verses 10 and 11. And I do want us to, to, to look that up if you have your, if you have a Bible or if you have a, a Bible app on your phone or your iPad. Um, 1 Corinthians 16 verses 10 and 11. 1 Corinthians 16, uh, if Timothy comes, see that he has nothing to fear among you, for he is doing the work of the Lord just as I am. Therefore, let no one intimidate him. And I, I love this. This is Paul writing to the Corinthian church, and um, he's saying, hey, if, if Timothy, my brother Timothy comes to you, he's a fellow worker in, in the faith, um, uh, don't, don't give him anything to fear among you. Um, and don't intimidate him. It kind of makes me wonder like what's going on in the Corinthian church, right? That, that when people come to them, that they get afraid or intimidated. So the Corinthian church must have been full of people who were strong personalities, right? Um, but the reason why I, I thought this was a good scripture to look at under being encourager is because one, Paul is an encourager to Timothy. Um, and uh, he encouraged Timothy in his life um, but also the other thing about being an encourager is not just to encourage individuals, but to also um, sort of be a, um, um, not, I don't want to say a bulldog, but, uh, you know, he's, he's looking out for Timothy, right? So he's not only encouraging Timothy to Timothy, but he's being an encourager to Timothy um, in how he, he speaks about Timothy. So um, one of the ways that we can be an encourager and speak into people's lives is how we talk about them to other people, right? And I think that's really key. Um, Paul is is sort of 
putting a little fence around Timothy. And we need people like that in our lives, right? We need people who will look out for us. And Paul's looking out for Timothy. So part of being an encourager is looking out for people. And we can speak into people's lives by looking out for them. Um, because God looks out for us, God takes care of us. And so when we take care of other people, um, we're speaking into their we're speaking into their lives as God would have us speak into their lives by being an encourager. Um, so be an encourager. And I, I love that example of, of Timothy and Paul. Um, all right. Uh, number three is be a confessor. Be a confessor. And the scripture I want to look at for that is James uh, chapter 5, verse 16. So if you want to flip over to, excuse me, the book of James chapter 5, verse 16. I apologize. I'm burping. I have a medical condition and I need prayer because I've got to lose like 20 pounds um, to keep all of this this prop, this stuff I'm having issues with to go away. Um, all right. Um, James chapter 5 verse 16. And uh, therefore confess your sins to one another. And pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. All right, so um, one of the ways that God can speak into our lives is, and this kind of goes back to being humble. If we're being humble, then we're being honest about our shortcomings. Um, uh, where, you know, we're all being perfected in the faith. We're all being perfected in love um, and, and being transformed more fully into the image of Christ. And, um, and so that means we have to be honest about our, um, our sins, where we're, where our shortcomings and where we fall short, where we mess up. So be a confessor. And when I say that, I don't mean just go around, you know, bleh, all over people about what your, whatever your issues are. It's about, um, uh, seeking wise counsel, people who, who, you know, are godly people that, that will encourage you when you confess your sins. Um, they will exhort you and they will help ease your ache, right? You know, when we, when we mess up, um, our hearts hurt and, and especially if we've hurt someone else. Um, so we need someone who will, um, help comfort us, ease our ache, exhort us, um, encourage and encourage us, when we confess our, our failings. And so when, when people speak in, encouraging and exhorting and, and comforting words into our lives, they are, they are being the voice of God into our lives. Um, and, and so just as James says, in order for that to happen, we have to, to confess our sins to one another. But do it to someone who you know is going to love you and, and not judge you, right? So um, that's one way that uh, God speaks. And then the converse of that is, is if someone comes to us and confesses their sin to us, then we need to be an encourager, an exhorter, and a comforter um, to ease their ache. Um, to, in order to be the voice of God into their life, we have to, to love and not judge, right? All right. Uh, number four is be a listener before a speaker. This kind of goes back to what I talked about being an active listener. Um, you really want to listen to what people are saying. Um, but it's also important if, um, uh, if in order for us to hear from God, right? If we want to hear what God is speaking to us through the Holy Spirit um, or perhaps through Scripture, one of the other ways that we've talked about how God speaks to us, um, we have to listen. We have to listen. And probably um, in, before we go to God in prayer with a list of things that, that we're, we're petitions that we're going to bring to God, we, we also need to sit and listen to what God's going to speak into our lives. So we have to sit and listen. Um, so, and that's, that's really important when we're talking about God using us to speak into other people's lives. We have to be willing to listen to what people are, are, are saying to us. Um, and then if we're going to, and in order to be, um, allow God to use us to speak in someone's life, we have to listen. Um, and then also, um, we need to, um, listen to God to, so that we know what we're supposed to say in certain situations. And, um, one of the things that he points out in the book that I think is really key about that, um, you know, there's a scripture and I didn't write it down, but Paul, where Paul says, I say this, not the Lord. I think it might even be in First Corinthians. I should have looked it up beforehand. But I, I love that about Paul. You know, that shows the humility of Paul. But he's like, I say this, not the Lord. You know, he's, he's making a very clear statement that this is from me, not from God. And um, so uh, Mark Batterson in the book talks about a friend of his who will say, 
um, he has a scale of one to 10, where 10 is this is from God, and one is this is from me. And he'll say, you know, uh, I feel like I need to share this with you, but on the scale of one to 10, where, you know, 10 is it's from God and one is it's from me, it's probably more like a four, right? And I think that's really, that's very, that shows humility. Um, and it's also a great way to share something with someone um, without being judgmental, but just saying, hey, I just think this is something I need to share with you. Um, and I think um, it would, it's important to speak this into your life. And so I like using a scale like that. I think that's important. Um, but in order to know whether it is a 10, right, it is from God that God is, is, is impressing upon you to speak this into someone's life, uh, then you have to listen to what God is saying. Um, so be a listener. Uh, and then uh, he talk, Mark talks about, um, he uses 1 Corinthians 12. So let's look at 1 Corinthians 12, uh, verses 8 through 10, um, to, about some different ways that Paul talks about how uh, God speaks through people. 1 Corinthians 12, 8 through 10. To one is given uh, through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, and to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the works of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. So these are spiritual gifts that, that Paul is listing that God gives to people through the Holy Spirit. And uh, and so the three that that are about God speaking to us through others or people speaking to, into our lives are wisdom. He says the um, oh, oh, um, an utterance of of wisdom, an utterance of knowledge, and um, prophecy. So there are three things that are sp spoken words that um, God can speak to us through people: wisdom, knowledge, and and um, a prophetic word. So kind of going back to wisdom, think about who, you know, you're, you're is speaking into your life. You know, if, if there's someone who is very crass and, and not very loving, then probably when they say something, you might want to take it with a grain of salt, right? Um, but if someone, they really are exhibiting the fruit of the Spirit, they are exhibiting love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, um, you know, pay attention to what the, what they're saying to you, because th then that might be wisdom from God about something you need. Now, that doesn't mean that that God can't speak to you through someone who's crass. I mean, you know, you might hear some somebody say something, but the Holy Spirit might convict you and say, "Hey, pay attention." You know, that's something you need to, because God, you know, God spoke to uh, was it Balaam through the through a donkey, right? God spoke through a donkey, so um, you never know who God might use to speak into your life. So, um, but but use wisdom, right? Be you consider the source, right? Consider the source. Um, a word of knowledge, and you know that's something that um, in some church traditions you don't hear a lot about. It freaks people out sometimes. Um, but an example he uses in the book that I liked that I thought was really good was a pastor friend of his was preaching. And the Holy Spirit impressed upon him during his sermon, hey, there's somebody in the congregation that is getting ready to have an affair. And so he stopped his sermon. He said, look, I, I'm, just, I'm just putting this out there, but I really feel like God's really impressing upon me. There is someone here that's getting ready to have an affair. And, and God is saying, don't do that. And, and then he went on with his sermon. Well, after church, a guy came up to him and said, you know... <laughs> like in tears, like that was me, like that was me. And so, um, you, you know, when God impresses something upon you, um, that's very important. You need to share that with somebody cause it can be, it can be life saving. Right. Um, but that's an example of a word of knowledge. And then, um, a prophetic word now, um, prophetic word, as Paul says, you know, that's that God gives people the gift of prophecy. It's not about, about f telling the future, Right. Um, that's not what prophecy is. Prophecy is um, is providing, say, a word of knowledge to somebody, but it's encouraging some. It's it's encouraging people, strengthening people, comforting people. It's it is um, um, the gift that is what the Holy Spirit does in our lives. Right. The Holy Spirit is a prophet. The Holy Spirit speaks God's um, God's will into our lives, which is always going to be. Um, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace. It's always going to be that a comforting thing, an encouraging thing, a strengthening thing. Um, 
it, it's uh, it, it can be convicting, but it's always going to be done in love, right? Um, so that's that's a prophetic word um, that that God might speak, and um, and if that I mean if that language, if that's if you're not comfortable with that language, if that freaks you out a little bit, um, I, I really like this, and and Mark point, points this out in the book, but in Numbers chapter eleven verse twenty nine. Um, uh, it, it, and I'm not going to read it, but it's Moses speaking in, in Numbers, and he says, um, "All God's. I wish that all God's people were prophets. I wish that all God's people were prophets. Now remember, if a prophet's job is to encourage, to strengthen, to exhort, to comfort, um, to, to, to do those things, then yeah, I wish everybody was like that, right? You know, not tearing other people down, but building people up. And um, that's, that's the job of a prophet, is to build people up. And um, so I agree with Moses. I, all people should be prophets, right? All people should be prophets. All right, the number five is be bold. Be bold. And um, Mark points this out in the book, but don't be afraid of people. Because if you're afraid of people, um, then you're not going to speak what God wants you to speak um, to that person if you need to. Um, and also, um, if you're afraid of people, then you're not going to receive a word that God might want to speak to you through somebody else. But one of the one of the the psalms that has become near and dear to my heart in terms of of this being bold and not being afraid of people is Psalm three six. And essentially, that's what he says in Psalm three six: is don't be afraid of people. Um, I'm just going to look at this real quick. Psalm chapter three, verse six. Uh, I am not afraid of tens of thousands of people. I am not afraid of people, right? That's Psalm, write that down, Psalm 3, verse 6. I am not afraid of people. I am not afraid of ten thousands of people. I'm not afraid of people. Um, don't be afraid of people, right? Um, God, um, they're your brothers, they're your sisters, they're, they're your fellow um, images of God. They were created in the image of God just like you. And um, and when you're not afraid of people, you can speak into their lives. You can you can you can listen to what God is saying and and be able to to speak into their lives in love and be an encourager and, and a comforter. All right, uh, the last one, number six, be a visionary for people. Be a visionary for people. And I just want to read a, a section from the book on that because I I, I thought this was he beautifully written. Um, he says. And this is on page 143 if you happen to have the book. Uh, when we hear the word vision, we tend to think of some grand objective, such as putting uh, a man on the moon. And that is one type of vision. But the most important kind of vision is a vision for people. And again, Jesus sets the bar. We don't know much about Mary Magdalene, but we do know that she was possessed by seven demons before Jesus cast them out. Mary had seven problems she couldn't solve. Mary was broken in seven places. Those are the people we tend to give up on, but not God. He, God won't give up. God doesn't give up. It's not in God's nature. We write people off like Mary, but Jesus writes them in. We write people off, but God writes them in. And um, he says the most important kind of vision is a vision for people. Um, and so I think if, if you're thinking, you know, if, if God is using you to speak into people's lives or if God is using people to speak into your life, um, uh, it's going to be someone who, who cares about people, who loves people, um, even if they're a little bit crusty. And we can all be crusty at some times, right? I'm guilty of that. I can be crusty uh, sometimes. All right. I want to close with a story that he has in the book that I thought was, was wonderful. And it's about um, a person who leads a student ministry and when he was young, um, he uh, was, went to a school where they every year they put this play on, and it was um, it was about a circus. And so all the little kids would dress up like little animals, and and there was always a, and there was a ringmaster, and the ringmaster was sort of the um, master of ceremonies of and and sort of the lead person in this play. Well, the first year that the school put it on, he was cast as a lion, and he was just he was little. And when he was supposed to roar, you know, it came out of like a little squeak. 
and the whole audience just started laughing. Now they weren't laughing at him. They were, they was just, they were laughing because it was just so cute, you know? And, um, but it, it scarred him, you know, as a little kid, he, he felt like they were laughing at him. And so, um, he, uh, um, it, 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 so the next year when they were going to do it again, he was really apprehensive and cause this had really affected his self-confidence, but the teacher, and this is how, this is a wonderful example of how God can speak through others into our lives. You know, whether the teacher knew that, you know, she had a heart for God and God was, was speaking through her to do this, um, we don't know, but, but it, it changed this little boy's life. Um, and he now leads a student ministry and speaks to thousands of people all the time. <laughs> but um, she, when she got to him, she said, this year you are our ringmaster. Such a beautiful story, right? She was an encourager. She spoke into his life a word of encouragement. Um, she saw in him the need to be lifted up, to be encouraged, to be comforted, to be, um, really, I guess really just to be encouraged. And I just I love that story, and and it, and and he the little the little boy now as an adult loves to tell that story because it that moment changed his life. It encouraged him, and that's what we can be. We can be encouragers uh, to people um, to, to encourage them to be all that God desired and created them to be. One of the things that I do with um, we do with the children at Lift. And um, I do it with the residents at the nursing home um, is to use a blessing. And it is based on what God said to, about Jesus when he came up out of the water at his baptism. Um, God said, this is my son with whom I'm well pleased, whom I love. Listen to him. It repeated at the transfiguration with the addition of listen to him. And I, I say, I speak that to people. I speak that over people uh, at the nursing home. And I have had people weep when I've said this before, um, and uh, and we do it with the children at Lift. But it's you are a child of God. God loves you. God is well pleased with you, and God hears your prayers. That's a blessing that I, I I speak to people all the time. Sorry, I'm being emotional, <laughs> but I just I you know, and I think one of the key things about that that's so powerful is that God is pleased with you. I, I think people, depending on what your tradition is, but I think a lot of people have been taught that they're worms crawling toward the cross. That's not biblical. That is not biblical at all. That is not from the Holy Spirit. God loves you. You're creating the good and holy and pleasing image of God, right? So I'm encouraging you. I hope that God is using me right now to speak into your life that God loves you, God is well pleased with you, and God hears your prayers, and you are a child of God. So I'm just going to close with that. Uh, I apologize, I'm being all weepy. Um, but anyway, so be blessed, and I encourage you with that. Um, we did have one one prayer request. It's, a not, it's an, an anonymous prayer request, so we won't use any names. We just want to pray for somebody who um, is from Lyft and a friend of theirs is has COVID and is in the hospital. So we, we want to lift up that person in particular. So let me, let me close us in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you so much that you speak to us and you desire to speak to us and that you speak to us through others. Um, and, and so, Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you that we are a community um, and that uh, we, we are created in your good and holy image. And and you use us to speak into our lives, into each other's lives. We thank you for that gift and that privilege and that honor. May we use it wisely, Lord. And may we listen with humble hearts and ears. Lord, we specifically lift up to you this person who um, has COVID and is in the hospital. There are like so many. This is not just one individual. Or there's so many that are in the same position as numbers continue to climb. We pray for your healing hand to be with all those who are affected by COVID. Um, we pray for distribution of the vaccine quickly, Lord, um, and, and for this pandemic to end. We thank you and pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We stayed right at 30 minutes, um, which is always my goal. Uh, thank you for watching and be blessed. And I will post the scriptures 
uh, for today after this is done. All right. Bye-bye.